everybody can be aware. I do know uh, Rebecca Martinez. We are colleagues. And when I see her, I say hello. She says hello to me. I may ask her about our day. She may ask her me about my day. But I will tell you that my decision on this case is not going to be, be impacted by the fact that I know her. So if anyone has any objections to me hearing this, now is the time to say so. State? No, Your Honor. Defense? Your Honor, I have all the confidence that it was fair and right in this case. So no objection. Nobody doesn't like Sarah Lee. This case was very regrettable, and it should have been a day of celebration. It was after a football game, uh, and she was acting in defense of another. Uh, she doesn't know the victim in this case. She doesn't know uh, the judge. She never knew who she was. And I sincerely believe that just because she's a judge doesn't mean that this case should be treated any different than any other case of any other person who comes to this court and gets justice. I'll ruin it by insulting my son. Is my throwing hand here. Shit. I said, so people, don't go on the stove and be bawling until... All right. Are the parties ready on Gracie Segunda? All right. The court is calling 2022 CR 10214B, State of Texas versus Gracie Segundo. Could I have parties announced for the record for the state? Daniel Escobar for the State of Texas. Defense. Javier Oliva and Bradley Bellows for the defendant, Gracie and Segundo. Are you Gracie Segunda? Yes, ma'am. All right. According to the plea bargain agreement, punishment is to be assessed at seven years in the prison. There's a $500 fine. The state is opposing your application for deferred adjudication. They're recommending community supervision, and there are items to be taken in consideration. Have both parties had a chance to review the PSI report? Yes. Any objections to the PSI report, state or defense? Judge, so there are some errors on the PSI report that we wanted to bring to your attention? Yes. So it lists the offense date as, I believe, November 16th of 2021, when in reality, the offense date that's on the indictment is October 16th of 2021. All right. And it lists that in the criminal history. There's an assault that was in the criminal history that it, it makes it seem as if they're two separate offense dates. Okay. And then I think in the, uh, towards the back of the actual statement itself that Ms. Sabuno gave, uh, there's a portion where it's talking about the co-defendant and that he's charged with ag assault, deadly weapon. Right. It's assault, SBI. It's the same offense. Okay. We just wanted to make sure you were aware. All right. And the court is also in receipt of victim impact statement. And the court reviewed that without objections from the state or defense. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. And the court is also in receipt of letters that defense presented on behalf of the uh, the accused. And there were no objections to the court reading those letters. Is that correct, state and defense? No objection, state no. judge. All right, so the court has reviewed all of those documents. Your Honor, I, uh, I also raise it as part of the agreement of coming back today was that uh, the misdemeanor occurred on the same day of this uh, alleged date. Um, was to be taken consideration with CC uh, County Court 4 case 969-3701. Yes, and the court does have that okay. as a part of the plea bargain agreement. And Judge, just to kind of expand on that, I believe as an additional part of the plea agreement was that she was to take responsibility for what happened yes. as a part of the TS, uh, TIC. That's yes. Okay. All right. So my understanding, the complainant in this case is... Uh, Rebecca Martinez? Yes. All right. And is that the Rebecca Martinez who's on the fourth court? Yes, Judge. Yes, sir. All right. President of the courtroom. So that everybody can be aware, I do know uh, Rebecca Martinez. She's never been to dinner at my house. I've never been to dinner at her house. But I, I do know her. Um, we are colleagues. And when I see her, I say hello. She says hello to me. I may ask her about our day. She may ask her me about my day. But I will tell you that my decision on this case is not going to be, be impacted by the fact that I know her. So if anyone has any objections to me hearing this, now is the time to say so. State? No, Your Honor. Defense? Your Honor, I have all the confidence that it was fair and right in this case. So no objection. All right. So are there any witnesses um, that anyone wishes to present, state? So the state doesn't have any witnesses. The main thing that we wanted the court to be aware of was uh, the statement from the complainant. 
All which right. which the court has already noted that they read. Yes. Defense, any witnesses? Your Honor, other than uh, my plea to you and our arguments to you before considering sentencing in this matter, uh, I will be speaking and Ms. Sabino may say a couple of words. And Ms. Sabino's parents are present in support of her today. Uh, I can stand with uh, Mr. Uh, standing here in support of her today. All right. Thank you. They will not be speaking. All right. So uh, before I begin with your presentation, with regards to the case to be taken in consideration, if you could raise your right hand for me, please. Do you solemnly swear or the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth to help you, God? Yes. All right. You can lower your hand. State your name for the record. Gracie Suna. All right. And with regards to county court cause number 693701, the state is taking that case into consideration. But to that case, how do you plea? No contest, sorry. I'm just so uh, nervous. That's okay. So in order for me to take that into consideration, she will have to accept full responsibility for it. So a no contest plea, I can't accept that because I don't have any police reports in regards to that. So she will have to enter a plea of guilty to it and accept responsibility for it. And then the state will tender dismissal to the court and the court will, will sign that. I don't know if you want to discuss that with her. I, I, we'll go ahead and proceed with a, a, a guilty plea, Your Honor. All right. So to county court cause number 693701, how do you plead to that? Guilty. All right. And state, do you have the dismissal yes, for Judge. the court in that cause number? <clears throat> All right. So the court then will hear argument. Uh, state, you're opposed to... Uh, deferred adjudication? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, the reason why the state is opposed is because of the nature of the offense, the actual underlying facts. It was an assault that occurred where the resulting assault did, it created a lot of issues for the complainant. She was severely injured. Her life was severely impacted from that day forward, and she still feels the impact to this day. Um, it's something that was senseless and didn't need to happen in the first place. So that's why the state is opposing deferred and is asking for probation. Uh, defense? Your Honor, we're here because one incident can't define a, a person for the rest of their life. And this is very serious, and no mm -hmm. doubt we take that very seriously. This is a felony charge. It's a felony charge that carries a very significant penalty. But Ms. Segundo, I think, has demonstrated um, a respect not only to others, but to um, to life and to animals and in her work and her career um, and taking care of pets. Um, but rarely do I have an opportunity to where a client will provide 32 letters of reference about how wonderful she is with caring for others. And that, that is the life that she uh, defines herself with. Um, she, we just feel like this should not define her as a felon for the rest of her life when she has four children as a single mother. We know that life is difficult and, and it's very, very, very hard. And she's having to raise four children on her own, ages 15, 14, 12, and 10. As a single mother, she has to be involved in her school activities and support their activities with FAA. And, and a felon cannot be associated with children and be around them in school activities. This would drastically impair her ability to be a mother to her children. And so she's really fighting to be able to continue to provide the love and the support of four children that need their mother uh, so that they can become better than her and have a future. Uh, she lives in Houston, she leases a home. She's lived in that home for three years. Uh, she has good family support. As I've said, her mother and father are present. She has a high school diploma. Uh, she has been employed during this whole time. This case is two years old. Two years this week, this happened. And it's been two years that she has been experiencing this, and she has complied with everything this court has asked. She's appeared in court. She's traveled to Houston to San Antonio. She has fully cooperated. She has weighed all of her. Uh, uh, decisions and sought not to seek a trial, but to put the decision on deciding her future on you. And she made that decision because she felt that was in her best interest. She does receive some child support. She is willing to do everything and anything that it takes to give her this opportunity. I explained to her 
that deferred adjudication is a double-edged sword. You may think that you're, okay, you're not going to be subject to a conviction, but in actuality, you are subject to all the conditions and behaviors for seven years. We're asking you, Judge, to give her that chance, to give her the opportunity to prove to you that this one incident does not define her life or who she is or how she is as a mother or how she works. This case was very regrettable, and it should have been a day of celebration. It was after a football game, uh, and she was acting in defense of another. Uh, she doesn't know the victim in this case. She doesn't know uh, the judge. She never knew who she was. And I sincerely believe that just because she's a judge doesn't mean that this case should be treated any different than any other case of any other person who comes to this court and gets justice because she should get an opportunity to do it. She's willing to do the urine analysis. She's willing to stay no contact and she's had no issues in the last two years with the uh, defendant, uh, the complainants in this case. She's willing to take anger management classes. She's uh, willing to do community service. She's willing to do what it takes to give her the chance. And she has proven, other than this one incident that happened in a flash, wasn't premeditated, it wasn't thought of, it was just something in her reaction and defense of someone that she was with. And for that reason, we think that she should be given an opportunity to earn the right to be able not to be a convicted felon. The amount of restitution in this case, I think we've agreed to, that was presented before the court was $2,416.29. We fully agreed to repay that. We will work hard every day to pay that back. But in this working community and in Houston and San Antonio, mothers every day have challenges. And we regret that this happened. And I know that she sincerely, I have nothing personal against Ms. Uh, Martinez or her husband. Um, she wants to do what's right, but she also wants a chance, Judge. And I'm asking you with all the fiber of my body to give her that chance. And I will make sure and work with her that she will comply with every condition so she will never be back here before you regarding any violation or any condition of this case. You want to say something? No, I'm curious. All right. Well, just so you know, in this court, I see everybody as a human being. I don't see them as their titles. So for me, defendants are not defendants. They're human beings who are accused of a crime. Um, the fact that, uh, Rebecca Martinez is a judge. That doesn't mean that I'm putting weight on the fact that she's a judge. If she were the president of the United States and she were here as a complainant, I wouldn't put weight on the fact that she's the president of the United States. He said, that's okay, let's go forward anyway. It's good publicity. These are corrupt people we're dealing with, the most corrupt people. I'm just dealing with the facts here. And my job is to look at everything objectively and not outside noise, not what people's occupations are. You understand? So I always reread everything and reread -re police reports and the PSI report, and I've read the letters. I do not understand how the fact that an elevator has a limited capacity, how we go from People saying the elevator is full. You cannot be in, ele in an elevator to it's a brawl. So explain that to me. I mean, it just, I, mean, I think it's you. I, I mean, there has to be some sort of thought process. For example, if there's an elevator, I think everybody knows there's a weight capacity on the elevator. Mm -hmm. Me personally, when I see there are too many people on the elevator, I don't get on. But Obviously, what we, we are here now for is there's an elevator. According to everything that I've read, the elevator was at capacity. And there were some, already some people on there. I don't understand how an elevator is at capacity. People need to get off or more people can't come on. How that ends up in a fight. Well, I, I couldn't tell you how it started. I just, you know, somebody in my party was getting into it and... Somebody hit me and I just reacted. 
unfortunately, yeah, I feel bad. And should never have done that. Shouldn't have got to that. It just happened really quick. I know, I know things happen quickly, but the police report I'm reading, it doesn't say that somebody in your party got in an altercation and you got hit. And so therefore you got into a fight. What your counsel is telling me is that somebody in your party, I guess, was in a fight and then you decided to get involved in that fight. No, I went to go and try and pull my, my friend away. And then like, I don't know, it was just a bunch of people and somebody hit me and I just reacted. Your Honor, if I could clarify, I think the facts is this is a COVID era situation in the elevator. These elevators can accommodate 18, 20, 22 people, and they were limiting it to seven. And as people went into the elevator, the policy and procedures of the elevator operator of not allowing people to come in once they met capacity. They were in the elevator. They were asked that there was too many in the elevator. And then people had to decide who's getting off. And they asked uh, who she was with, another man and another person to get off the elevator. That person said, I want to talk to your supervisor. That individual entered into an altercation with the uh, victim's husband that spilled out of the elevator onto the floor. She came in, in assistance to that man, and that's when she was hit, and that's when she struck the victim. Uh, that stated in one of the reports here that was provided to you in the PSI, and she did not she did not go in there to fight. She didn't go in there to look for someone to fight. She was uh, trying to get someone off of her friend. Uh, and, and in the process of that was, was struck and she struck and she, uh, injured, uh, Ms. Martinez. And so it's, it's regrettable judge. There's no doubt about that. And this incident happened in a matter of seconds. And, um, and that's what we're here two years later doing that. And in addition to that judge, th there is a civil suit in this case where the parties in this case are seeking million dollars in damages against my clients. And so this case will not end today. It will continue in a civil matter with a lower burden of proof, uh, where she will have to defend herself in a civil cause of action for money damages. And judge, just to clarify from the state's end, um, I would disagree with the characterization of the how the incident started. The party was already on the elevator. With, the complainant's party was already on the elevator. They were asked to not enter the elevator. They weren't kicked off the elevator. They were asked not to enter. They were in the elevator. And, that, and that's what started it. And I also have a copy of the lawsuit that was filed this week before the sentencing where they're seeking a million dollars of damages in civil lawsuit right here. You want to see it, Judge. It's public record. I would object just because it's relevance. So lawsuits and filed in the city court, that's a copy from the courthouse. All right. Uh, unless there are some facts that are listed in the... It leaves the whole case, Your Honor. Exactly what you're talking about is pled in the uh, in the civil suits. I mean, if that document has facts that somebody has, well, alleged facts that somebody has presented, that's a different rendition from what's in here, then the court will... It does not, Judge. All right. So but just to let you know, there is a civil suit. All right. Then the objection will be sustained. Okay. So, all right. Anything else from either side? No, Your Honor. No, no. All right. I've read your letters that were presented, and it appears that, you know, other than this one incident, you're a great person. But sometimes sentencing, well, not sometimes, always sentencing has to do with punishment, rehabilitation. <laughs> And basically, whether or not someone should go to prison or not go to prison, these are all things I have to think about. You understand? And so I have to weigh certain things. And the things that I'm weighing are the fact that there were people in the elevator and you were asked not to get on the elevator. Is that correct or is that not correct? You were on the elevator. Your Honor, the, uh, the elevator's door was open. They, were, they, they entered into the elevator and they were asked, there were too many in the elevator and the elevator operator asked people to voluntarily get off. All right, so there were already people on the elevator. Then you got on the elevator and you were asked to get out? I just walked in at once. All right. And then, and then you were asked to leave? They said we need people to get off. All right, so why didn't you just get off the elevator? That's what I don't understand. Sure. 
You didn't decide that. Yeah. She she didn't decide that. It was a person that she was with, Your Honor, who is a defendant in the case uh, that's in the in another court. So my question is though. If there are too many people on the elevator, and let's say you get on the elevator, it's a group of you, the elevator is already filled. I'm assuming, and correct me if I'm wrong, people were on the elevator. They had not met their maybe their seven-person capacity. And then you and your group come on, and because of the number in your group, they've exceeded their seven-person capacity. And then they're saying, you all need to get off the elevator and wait. Why not just get off the elevator? That's what I don't understand. Even if you're with somebody in your party who says, I'm not getting off the elevator, why didn't you just get off and I'll wait for the next elevator. I'll take the stairs. I don't understand. We had already gotten off two, four. So we said like, we were, we've been waiting, but we didn't want to be the ones to get out. And, and was alcohol involved or people just well, don't want to take the it was stairs? was after a football game, Judge. Hmm. State, does anybody want to? Any, I know the complainants are here. Do they want to no, say Your anything Honor. to the court? No, Your Honor. Okay. Oh, Your Honor, I, may I have one moment? Yes. Your Honor, I'm going to call Bill Washington's. Okay. Your Honor, he, he's not a uh, he's not a uh, victim in this case. Uh, what, why would he come to? I mean, we'll see what he has to say. I don't know if it's a he's a relevant witness or not, but if he were present at the scene. You know, I, I would think that the person involved is the one who's uh, in, in this case is the one that would need to address it. He's had his day in court. Uh, he has spoken uh, before the court. I, I don't see why he needs to speak in this case uh, at sentencing. All right. You can call your witness. State calls David Martinez. All right. Good Your Honor. You're welcome. If you can raise your right hand for me, please. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. All right. You can lower your hand if you'll state your name for the record. David Martinez. All right. State. Mr. Martinez, from your memory, what occurred on that day? On that day, we were in line to get into the elevator. Uh, with the capacity of the elevator, of course, as I mentioned, was 18. But because of the COVID area, uh, there was an elevator attendant there. She said only eight could be allowed in. We were three couples and two children, which were a total of eight. Uh, as we walked in, we were already in the elevator. They decide to come in behind us. The elevator attendant told them they need to step out. It's full. They had been intoxicated. Her friend, Objection, up. speculation. Uh, Overrule. No, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing. At the, we're, you cannot address the attorneys. Uh, once an objection oh, is, yes. no problem. Once the objection is raised, just stop speaking. I'll make a ruling on the objection. And then uh, I'll let you know if you can continue or not, if you have a question about that. Uh, that objection will be overruled. Uh, he came in, stood at the door, prevented the door from closing. Uh, began I don't objection, Your Honor. I just asked for clarification from the ones that I don't know. He is. Who, which he are you speaking about, sir? Uh, her partner. Uh, there was two gentlemen, which was the initial one that started arguing with us, uh, and her partner that she was mentioning that walked in. And uh, they were not, we were already in the elevator already when they decided to block the, uh, the door from closing. Uh, can't recall the, the individual's name, but it was a younger gentleman that was with her. Uh, he proceeded to argue with the elevator attendant about, you know, letting them in or not, that it was BS, that they cannot be let, you know, let in because there was a lot of room. And uh, she told him that he had to leave. He continued to argue with her. And he said that he wanted to talk to her supervisor. And she says, if that's the case, she shut off the elevator. And that's when words were back and forth. They continued berating us. Uh, she was cussing like a sailor, as well as the other ones. We kept quiet, and uh, they started again arguing with us. We stayed in there. The kids were already getting terrified uh, with what was going on. Uh, they started crying, and they continued with their vulgar language. And I, I told, I just told them one time, uh, you know, that's it. You know, if you, the gentleman that was with them, got upset, he literally from the outside ran into the elevator, knocked us all over and uh you know assaulted all of us in there 
I grabbed him and I pushed him out. It was not the individual that she says was in there. It was the other individual that was with him that probably hosted them to the game. And he and I went outside. And after that, but from there, sir, is that, is that where everything happened? Correct. Pass with this judge. Any questions? Ms. Martinez, I'll just start right from leaving the elevator. So by the time that you set foot out of the elevator, you're in the middle of a physical altercation. Is that I was, right? uh, yes, well, I was on the ground. Okay. How much were you able to perceive about what was happening around you while you were in the middle of that? Well, I was, I was on the ground. Like the yeah, all right, it's one of the So my question was, how much were you able to perceive about what was going on around you during the middle of that physical altercation? And I was not able to see when, when I was in the ground what was taking place after that. Okay, and we can agree that the incident in question, the basis of this criminal case here today, is something that happened during the middle of your physical altercation, right? Uh, while I was on the ground, yes. And then afterwards, I did get up and partially uh, saw my wife on the ground with a bloody nose. She was in a daze, and I asked her what happened. And uh, I told her that she got hit. She said, yeah, I got hit multiple times. And I said, well, why didn't you defend yourself? She says, I couldn't because I was being held down. Oh. Can you say for certainty whether or not Ms. Segundo was acting in defense of another whenever she got involved yeah. in this incident? I'm going to object to relevance. All right, that'll be overruled. You can answer the question if I, you know. I can't say that, but, uh, you know, I can't, I can't answer that. Oh, and I understand, Mr. Martinez, the you know, walk for justice on behalf of the injuries for your wife. I just want to make sure that we're also serving justice here for Mrs. Segundo today based on her amount of involvement in this incident. And there was so, no, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, please. Thank you. No, there was only uh, two other parties involved, three parties, and, and the party, the individual is with me had already left, but it was only her left with her friend. And there was nobody else around. Nobody, there was people watching. Nobody was getting involved, but they were the only ones actively, physically getting involved. But, uh, and... I know we started this conversation based off what's happening when you're leaving the elevator. Prior to the altercation of leaving the elevator, would you say that in any way Mrs. Segundo was the instigator who was trying to start the situation? No. I have no further questions. All right, any other questions? Nothing from the state judge. All right, thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, any other witnesses? No, Your Honor. All right, the court will hear final argument if there is any. Your Honor, I, I think it's clear that Ms. Segundo did not start this incident, uh, that her actions uh, occurred outside the elevator as a result of defending another person. Uh, she doesn't deny that she struck uh, Ms. Martinez, uh, that this was a, a, a situation where she was struck as well. And uh, we believe that this one incident that wasn't premeditated, it wasn't started or caused by her, you know, it, it reminds me of, 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 of a penalty and another individual comes in their aid and then another flag comes up for a penalty and they both uh, get penalties. And in most cases in sports, that's an offsetting. And I think in this case, uh, at, a, at looking at the situation, looking at history since that day, that I think it would be fair to give this single mother a chance to continue her life from being a mother and working at her employment. So not to have this crash down on her with her children, with her workplace. Uh, we can't promise that she will uh, keep her job upon con uh, this conviction. We cannot promise that she can be able to parent her children and be the primary caretaker of her children as a result of this conviction. But we can promise that if she is given a chance, she will do everything in her power to remain on probation for seven years to do what's right, so not to be considered a felon in a situation that she wished never had happened. There's no ill will here. There is no desire on her part to do anything but to, to move on with her life and pay what's owed uh, the $2,500 and do what it takes to win your trust. So we're asking judge that deferred adjudication be given to this woman so that she can continue to do her life and do good for her children and her, her work in her community. State, uh, any final arguments? Your Honor, the concern from the state here is, again, the facts of the case. It's that, yes, she wasn't the instigator, but she chose to take it to this level. It was her choice to take this out on the complainant. It was her choice to get involved against the complainant and to not show restraint. 
is the issue that this all started over something very trivial, that if just a little bit of patience, this would have all passed over. That moment that she decided to act how she did has affected the complainant from that day until today. And it's going to affect her past this. That's why the state is asking for uh, probation on this case and for you to not grant her deferred adjudication. All right. So what is the amount of restitution and who is the rest restitution to? It's to Rebecca Martinez and... 2416 Wait, 2400 $16.29. And also in the plea bargain agreement, it says restitution to uh, Jeanette Rojas. Yes, uh, Your Honor. So we haven't gotten any uh, medical or billing from there. So we would ask restitution to be determined on that amount. All right. So with regards to the uh, restitution to Jeanette Rojas, if there's a restitution amount that's submitted to the court and you all have objections to it, we can have a restitution hearing. Thank you. And I'll just write in that there's to be a restitution hearing. as it relates to Jeanette Riojas. And I'm assuming she's gonna to wanna to transfer to Houston? Yes, Ron. And what? It's in Harris County. Mm -hmm. All right, Ms. Segunda, I've listened to all arguments. I want you to know I paid very close attention to the arguments that were presented to the witnesses and to all of the documents that the court reviewed. I realize that sometimes when things happen, it's just a Snapchat or somebody's life, right? It doesn't mean that the person is a horrible person. And I'm sure if people could go back and change things, Sometimes people are serious when they say, if I could go back and change things, I would. Maybe I never would have went to the game. I would have just let the elevator went. I would have taken the stairs. I understand that. But we can't turn back the hands of time, right? And the problem uh, in this case, and one of the things that I'm looking at is the fact that the complainant has serious injuries. And it has nothing, my consideration on whether they're a judge or not, that's not playing any factor in my decision. If um, she did not have that occupation, let's just say she worked at the HEB, for example, then based upon her, on her injuries, she wouldn't be able to work at the HEB. She wouldn't be able to stock. She wouldn't be able to stand and be a cashier. I don't know what they would have her doing at the HEB. You understand? So her injuries are very serious injuries. And I've read the report uh, that was given to me about her injuries. And I've read the PSI report and I've read um, the police reports again in this case, because I always like to uh, review things. So I understand that you're very sorry for what happened, but sometimes, yeah, it's great that you're sorry. It's great that you've inter internalized things, but there is still some punishment associated with it. And I understand that sometimes when people have felony convictions, they say, well, now I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't do this. But then when you look at the complainant, complainant has some lifelong issues. And that's the report that I was given and that your attorney has read. The injuries that she suffered are not going away. And from the report I read, it sounds like they're never going away. She's always going to have those injuries. And I think you know that when people have broken bones, there's a change in the weather, their bones ache. I have it with my fingers because at one point in time, all my fingers were broken on my left hand. So I know when the weather is changing, it gets a little bit painful, not unbearably painful, but it does. So those are a whole host of things that happens when somebody suffers the injuries that she suffered. I understand, as I said, that you're sympathetic and I believe that you're sympathetic and if you could do things over, you would. But I am where I am right now, okay? All right, this is what the court is do gonna do. Court will find you guilty, sentence you to seven years in the prison, suspended and probated for five years. There's a $500 fine that will be probated. There's a transfer to Houston, Texas, Harris County. 
take in consideration county court cause number 693701. There's to be restitution of $2,416.29 to Rebecca Martinez. There's to be no contact with Rebecca Martinez or Jeanette Riojas. Proof of employment within 45 days. There's to be no employment as a home health care provider with minors. 100 hours of community service restitution. That'll be waived once you complete parenting classes. There's to be regular reporting by Zoom or in person, regular UAs and restitution hearing as it relates to Jeanette Riojas. I don't see this as an anger management situation. I see this as an aberration. I think she doesn't need anger management classes. So is there anyone gonna object to me not giving her anger management classes? The see one object, Judge. All right. Probation, is there anything else she needs? No, Your Honor. Is there anything else you need from the court to be successful? All right. I'm going to show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendants rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yeah. All right. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement and because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal because this is a felony conviction. You're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question of what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? <laughs> All right, we can go off the record. So what I've learned in my time on the planet, it's just best when somebody says, oh, you can't do that and you wanna argue about it, pick another day to argue about it. You understand? All right, good luck to you. Thank you. I think that everybody needs to know what, what is happening in your court. And the courtrooms legally, they're supposed to be open to the public. Because to me, being on YouTube really is no different than allowing uh, the media to come into your courtroom and film everything. And if you can imagine courtroom is packed and then you have all those large cameras in there, that's taking up more space. So. Let's get the facts straight. She loves a verbal ashtray. Never blowing smoke when she gets pissed. She's quick to castrate. Love her on a good day. Love her on a bad day. Either way, she's here to stay, stay, stay. Call up holy, holy, holy.